hello welcome back to my channel today i wanted to talk about the different types of binging when you have binge eating a lot of people online are like binge eating is directly a correlation of restriction and it's not always the case so many other scenarios which can cause binge eating that are not really spoken about so i wanted to speak about these different types of binge eating first of all you do obviously have the physical binge eating which is caused by restriction it's usually a cycle of restriction and binging so everyone's cycle looks different so some people will restrict during the day and binge at night some people will restrict during the week binge on the weekend some people will just binge sporadically and then restrict to make up for it and it's sort of like a cycle like binge restrict and because they're so one extreme or the other it just constantly goes like this so we need to find a more like ground like this for you so that you don't end up having these extremes again the next type of binge eating is emotional binge eating i suffered with emotional binge eating habitual and physical so if you're looking for someone that's been through it i am here and i know exactly how awful each type of binge eating is. Emotional binge eating can be caused by triggers. Triggers emotionally that put you in your emotional state of mind. And when we're in our emotional state of mind and that emotional side of our brain, we cannot think rationally, which is why these binges happen. Because say you were, you're in a fine mood, you could think about everything rationally. One thing happens, it puts you in an emotional state and then you end up binging because you cannot think rationally anymore. Whereas if you're able to manage those emotions, you wouldn't then go into that emotional state. I like to think of this in thoughts, feelings, behaviors, like columns. So think of a thought that you often tell yourself that's not very nice. Think of like, oh, I'm a failure because I've ate so much today. Think of that as your thought. Our thoughts lead to feelings and our feelings lead to behavior. So that thought creates feelings and the feelings that are created from that thought are like guilt, shame, embarrassment, sadness, stress and that puts us into our emotional state which then creates binging. It could create unproductivity, it could create being a bad friend, it could create not getting out of bed that morning, not looking after yourself. Those are the behaviours that those emotions create. Okay so you have this thought like I am such a bad person, I'm such a failure, I've eaten too much today. If you say no, that is just a thought and that is not actually true. I'm going to treat myself like a friend right now and say, okay, maybe I've eaten a little bit more than I thought I was going to eat, but was I hungry for it? Was I craving it? Did I enjoy it? Yeah. Okay, well, that's okay. You're allowed to do that. Let's move on so that we can think about this rationally. So that creates a different thought. So then you're saying, okay, maybe I've eaten a little bit more than usual, but I'm okay with that. That's the thought, and then that leads to feelings of like calm, freedom, zen. You just feel so much more calm, and then the behaviors are so different. You'll probably just eat as normal that day. You'll probably be more productive, more happy, more sociable. Everything's better if we are able to change that thought. Even if the thought comes, like, because negative thoughts are always gonna come and go, but if we can respond to it, saying like, our thoughts aren't real, this thought, that came into my mind that's negative isn't real then we can sort of push it aside and not have those emotions attached to that thought if that makes sense or even if we get to the emotional stage where you're like okay well i'm feeling emotional what has caused this and then you can go backwards and like go through that thought and why it's not true and even provide examples to show that it's not true and then you avoid going into that emotional state. This takes a lot of work but once you understand that it's like thoughts, feelings, behaviours, I feel like it helped me so much. It was just the most... I felt understood when I saw this table because I was like this is exactly what happens and it is so hard to change but even if you can just be body neutral with yourself, a lot of the time for me anyways and for a lot of my clients they don't like their body that day or they beat themselves down about their body and this is causes them to binge and they're like why did a negative body thought cause me to binge it's so it seems so counterproductive but it's not if you think about it because you're having that thought like say you tell yourself i am so fat this creates those emotions like so many emotions and that creates you to binge so if you change it to a more neutral comment because sometimes being positive is a bit too much of a step from being so negative to yourself. So if you can just say, okay, this is my body. You don't need to say anything else. This is my body. There's just no emotions attached to that. So you can just move on. And I feel like being neutral towards yourself is a really good step after 
being so negative to yourself. That seems like a lot of information. I hope this makes sense. The next one is habitual. Habitual binging can be caused originally by emotional or physical but it sort of just becomes a habit and then you you can fix your eating patterns and eat more during the day and you can sort of fix these emotions but it's just become a habit in your day or even it could be a comfort for you it could be a stress comfort so when you get back from work you chill out and all you want to do is eat everything because it makes you feel good Food gives us dopamine and dopamine makes us feel happy so no wonder we go to food to make us happy Sometimes if we're lonely we'll eat because it's filling a void which is kind of emotional as well but sometimes it's just a habit after you've been feeling that so it's kind of like you've done it a few days in a row and then it becomes something that you just go to and you don't even think about it, it's like autopilot. So for habitual we need to put, say this is you and this is the binging for a habit we need to put something in the middle so that it shocks your system and makes you think about the binging so it's not so autopilot anymore. That's probably the first step. We need to put something in the middle as a barrier. So for example, if you get up every night, you're trying to sleep, you get up every night and you go and eat everything in the cupboard. I have given my clients a task to do, some very small task, just write a sentence on a bit of paper, drink a glass of water, and then if you still feel hungry and still feel like you need to eat, fair enough, if you're hungry it's actually different, if you still feel like you have those binge urges after that, have something fulfilling to eat, have something like a bowl of oats or something that's actually going to fill you up rather than like snacky things because that can spiral a lot more. Eventually you won't feel the need for that like bigger snack anymore probably unless you're not eating enough during the day but that's physical so it doesn't matter. It's very very difficult to describe it all because sometimes it is sort of like intertwined as well but habitual we just need to change your habits and rewire your brain think of your brain putting post-its everywhere your brain's doing that inside to help you so say when you go into a situation that's really scary then your brain's putting post-its like danger scary so that you know that you're in danger and you can get out of there or if you go to the beach for example your brain's like happy um, relaxed and it has these connotations your brain automatically puts these post-its everywhere so when we have a habit our brain has that post-it that says binge because binging makes you feel happy it's connected those things together for you because it thinks it's helping you but it's actually in this case not helping you so we just need to change the post-it so that binging and happiness don't go together and we replace the habit with something else that makes you feel just as happy and as the more you replace it the more you practice that replacement the easier it will become to ignore those urges and the habit will become something else and you will eventually not even think about it anymore. So that is everything for today's video. I really hope this helped and I hope it sort of made you realize maybe what you're struggling with or what a friend is struggling with or just make you understand binging more in general. I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you very soon. Bye.